This is lesson one. Welcome. I'm glad you came back. In this lesson, the first in module one, Fundamentals of Information Technology, we look towards getting a definition of information technology and further or expand our discussion to look at its impact on our society. this lesson we're going to look at three specific objectives and they're coded SO as in specific and you'll see 1, 2 and 12 so you can back check with your syllabus and note those objectives. These objectives are here for us to explain the concept of IT, describe the relationship between IT and other disciplines in computing and outline briefly the history of information technology. As we approach this lesson, there are some guiding questions. Uh, for instance, what is IT? So as we go through this lesson, we should get an, an answer to that question. Uh, also, what is the relationship between IT and other disciplines in computing? And what has been IT's impact on society, on education, on the economy, uh, etc., etc.? Those are some of the questions we want to bring into perspective and, and answer as we go through this lesson. So, you must have thought about it. What is IT? What is information technology? IT, information technology, what is it? Some would consider it to be the broad subject that's concerned with all aspects of managing and processing information. Others would perhaps refer to it as a term that encompasses all forms of technology used to create, store, exchange, and use information in all its various forms, whether it's business data, whether it's voice conversations, still images, motion pictures, or even multimedia presentations. Now you'd notice from both of these definitions some emerging ideas. Essentially, um, you recognize that the element that seems to be coming out here is the use of the technology to manage information. That's a critical point. Now here's another emerging idea. Now whenever we talk about technology, the first thing that comes to our mind or we typically think about computers or in a very broad sense, computing devices. Now this leads us to our next What is a computer? What is a computer? Have you ever thought of that? Well, I have. That I found in the text, a text log on to IT for CSEC by Burbell and Taylor. It's a 2009 edition, which is the second edition. It's a long one publication. They propose that a computer is a programmable electronic device that processes data following a set of instructions to produce information which it can output or store for future use. Hmm. Some key things here. A computer is a programmable electronic device that processes data. Now, this is important, that processes data. Hmm. Following a set of instructions to do what? To produce information, which it can either output or store for future use. That's important. So if we were to summarize that definition, we are seeing, and I, I like this schematic, so to speak, of a computer or computing system. A computer is an electronic programmable device that allows us to input data, process that data, and produce information. Notice those key components? Input, 
output and processing and you we saw mention of storing for future use which is your memory good a more detailed schematic or block diagram if you will of a computer uh, it's more elaborate it shows your input again and we're inputting data and we see the output which is information and we notice this processing which is the, the cpu does the processing or central processing unit this schematic has a little more detail in that it tells you the central processing unit is comprised of a control unit and something called an arithmetic and logic unit or alu for short and you notice memory here there are other diagrams that i add a further level of detail where the memory unit is uh, subdivided into its well, two main parts primary storage and secondary storage and we we're going to talk about those in a, in a bit so when we consider the basic layout of any computing system we recognize is an input unit an output unit we notice there's a central processing unit with the ALU and control unit and we have memory now we could talk about the functions of those components of a computer and we say computer uh, sort of loosely it could be a computing device uh, that's more politically correct because uh, our cell phones or smartphones can and in fact are computing devices because there's an input unit and output unit and some sort of processor inside there good so it's not just restricted to a desktop or laptop or tablet uh, there's several computing devices so we look for the input unit and this really is just the part of the computer system that is responsible for accepting data and instructions typically from the user into the computer we have the classic examples of the keyboard the mouse a scanner joystick these are classic examples of input unit now the output unit that's the part of the computing system that's responsible for displaying the results of the process data and instructions so we put in data and instructions and the output unit uh, shows us or displays uh, the result of that processing classic examples of output units our devices are your monitor or your what people will call your screen of your computer all right a printer a speaker a plotter even a projector those are the classic examples of output units or output devices now the central processing unit or cpu for short this is what many consider to be the brain or the heart of the computer uh, that's where the processing takes place and it consists primarily of the control unit or cu and the arithmetic and logic unit now the control unit is what i like to call the traffic police within the the cpu because it really is responsible for accepting data and interpreting instructions that are to be processed by the alu so it controls the input and output devices it's responsible for storing data to memory it's responsible for retrieving information from memory it's responsible for activating the input and output units to perform the various uh, the respective roles so, so for me the control unit is like that traffic police that guides the flow of data and instructions through the computing system the alu or the arithmetic and logic unit within the cpu is responsible for processing any instructions that require calculations and or comparison hence arithmetic and logic unit the main memory which is you know you notice from the schematic or that diagram of the computer system we saw there's the memory unit but that memory unit really is comprised of main memory or main storage and it really is, is small and it stores data and instructions temporarily and that is any programs or apps that your computer is running at that point in time is typically held in main memory some examples of main memory would include ram so when you're buying a computing system or <clears throat> a computer and you hear about ram or main memory that typically tells you how much 
space or memory you have available for running applications. And your experience with computers would realize that when you have several apps or programs running at the same time, your system performance sort of lags or slows down. That's because it's eating up in your, uh, your memory. Now, I think uh, the, if you're using uh, applications or programs that, uh, that uh, make a heavy demand on your RAM, you recognize the performance difference. Uh, folks who are into uh, music production or audiovisual production, who are into graphic designing, even architectural drawing and printing, uh, and even gaming would typically want systems with larger main memory or uh, RAM. Okay, that is so that they can have good performance of the system uh, because they're using programs that are really demand a lot of system resources. Uh, backing storage, on the other hand, is much larger than main memory and is typically used for more permanent storage. It would be a good idea if you could do some uh, personal research on the various types of main memory and get yourself uh, off air, so to speak, with uh, memory. Now, we we agree that information technology is pervasive. We, we have a better understanding now of what the computer is, or what is a computer, its main components and their functions. I think this is a critical point or stage for us to really look at uh, some of the terms that are typically related to uh, IT. And we're, we're doing that so that we can begin to examine the relationship between IT and uh, really other computing disciplines. As a distinct, separate and apart, is IT any different to computer science? Uh, what is software engineering? Computer engineering, for example, or information systems. Those are terms we often hear when we talk about computing or computer science in that broad area. But what's the relationship between them and IT? Uh, that really is going to be one of your our first task to take care of. Also, we're going to look at what has been its impact on society. How, how, has, how has information technology really impacted our society? Now, we recognize it's, it's pervasive. In our orientation session, we spoke to all the technologies that have really made the world a global uh, economy and all that. But what really has been the impact on our society of using information technology. If you trace the history of computers and IT, you begin to get that picture. That too is another task I would like you to engage in, tracing briefly the history of computers and IT. And finally, I want you to think about this. As you look at how IT has impacted our society, Question then is, how has our society changed as a result of IT? And you could essentially think of this in the sense of what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of information technology? Take some time, think about that, and craft your response.